Hey everyone, I recently a friend of mine who's responsible for LLM pre-training and inference asked me about MCP and I could not resist to tell him all about it. Today I'm gonna explain how model context protocol works and we will see the real world scenario of uh, using a uh, model context protocol to turn on the light bulb. My name is Ruslan Sirojdinov. I'm a software development engineer at Avia Sales. I'm responsible for the development of a variety of machine learning services, LLM applications, and the dialogue systems. In 2017, Google Research presented a paper called Attention is All You Need, uh, where the transformer architecture was presented. And this is basically the basic architecture for all modern uh, large language models. In 2018, GPT-1 was presented by OpenAI, and the main idea behind that model is to give the model a text as an input and generate the output, like you ask some question and you get an answer. And from that time, the race of large language models started. Every company was investing into their own LLMs, but the main idea remained the same. So you get the text inside and you generate the output text based on the context that it has. But this approach had a limitation. When you ask a model, what's the weather like currently? The model answers, sorry, I've been trained on a data before 2023. And this problem is called knowledge cutoff. In 2023, OpenAI presented a new model, GPT-4, with a new paradigm. What if we can generate the structured output rather than just a plain text? And that means that model does not have a straightforward answer to the question, but it says that, can you give me some more information and I can answer that question? And here is how we use it. If the model gives us a structured output, as a function call with some kind of name, we find a corresponding service with the name and call it with uh, specific arguments. Then we receive an answer from the service. Then we give this information to the model and the model sees that in its input context, it has like a question and kind of the answer for it. And it gives an appropriate generation based on the context that it has. So that kind of technology or an approach, we can add more tools and make the model smarter and self-sufficient. We also get cool word agent describing that approach, but the problem becomes apparent. On the one hand, each model is trained on a different data and via a different training process. Therefore, it gives us a different kind of structured output and we need to write some code to support that type of a function call. On the other hand, we have a different tools with a different interfaces, which we also need to write some code to support. So the engineers at Anthropic noticed a growing zoom of tools and LLMs and wondered how they could be uh, unified under a single communication protocol. In 2024, the model context protocol was introduced. It became an effective bottleneck for connecting LLMs with their tools and it quickly emerged as a community standard. Soon, nearly all frameworks and applications adopted the protocol for communication. So to communicate, we just need to write a MCP client for LLM and MCP server for a tool. And now various LLMs which support MCP can connect with any tool which support MCP. That's the main idea. That became what USB type C is in the world of wires, a universal connector. But the core idea remained the same, is to give LLM an ability to request an additional information through a function call. And pretty much everybody in the community supported that idea. And a lot of companies started to publish their own MCP server as an alternative to a REST API. And now you can access a programmatic interface without any knowledge of programming via just a natural language communication with large language model. Now let's start digging deep into the protocol itself and see what it's all about. On the right hand side, we see the MCP hosts, which can be cloud application, lang chain framework, or a cursor IDE that accesses a large language model itself and gets all the requests and outputs all the responses. If the function call happens, the MCP host finds corresponding MCP server and with the help of MCP client, they both share some data via model context protocol. Here is how the agent with the MCP server works in detail. The main object here is the dialogue context, which aggregates all the necessary information for the model 
And first, it gets the system prompt, recommendations for a model on how to behave. Then MCP host asks an MCP server for available tools and converts it into a function calling protocol of a specific LLM via MCP client. And resulting structured text that describes the reading tool is also placed into the dialog context. After that, we receive a request from the guy on the left and you know what? we place it into a dialogue context. So the model now has everything in context. It knows how to behave. It knows what tools it can use and what problem it needs to solve. Imagine if the model does not know the answer to the question immediately and it calls a reading tool to get an additional info from a specific file which contains a useful information. The MCP client converts function call into a model context protocol JSON RPC message and sends it to the server through various channels like standard IO, streamable HTTP, WebSockets, and server send events. The server responds with a MCP message that contains information for a corresponding request. That message is received by an MCP client and the client converts it to a function call result and appends it into a dialog context. MCP host sends the resulting context into LLM to process and the model responds with a plain text answer describing how to read. Protocol allows us not to just only send a single request and get the response, but also get the complete stream of messages if the task takes a long time and we can make the thinking effect in the user interface. Protocol allows us to send the text and the binary data. That means that we can process pictures, documents, videos and so on. MCP gained its popularity because of easy integration, a big supportive community and this automatic error handling ability. When the tool responds with an error text and the model can automatically make some changes to the next call so the tool call succeeds. This agentic approach also has some flaws. Imagine if a tool responds with some malicious text that can change our model behavior. Similar to SQL injection, the prompt injection can occur. Also, if we take public MCP servers for granted, we risk facing tool poisoning, a situation where the tool description injected into the dialog context contains malicious text. There are some alternatives like universal tool calling protocol that saves us from writing MCP servers code, which often is a just a proxy server to a real HTTP API server. Also, there are protocols for connecting multiple engines into a single network. Now we will make our own MCP server with FastMCP library in Python. Here is our MCP server code. So it defines a function set light state with a parameter that can be set to on and off and it returns some string, okay? It also sets the description to tell the model that this function can be used to set the state of the light. And the function itself is making a HTTP request uh, with the method get into the IP address of the light bulb with parameters that contain state. So when we get the response, we return the text to tell the model if the operation succeed. We used fast MCP package to define this tool. And then we open up our cloud desktop config and we set the command to our executor and the arguments to the script. Before we get into the cloud, let's see the MCP inspector. So we list the tools and we see one tool with the description that we defined and you can manually debug this tool. Now we open the cloud application and let's tell the model to flicker the light. Here we go. So we see that the light is turning on and turning off again and we see all the tool calls. So model decides what to do based on the input and the context that it has. Thank you for watching. Here are my social networks. Leave comments if you have any questions. Subscribe and like. See you next time.